From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Dr. St. Clair returning your call, Stinky. Oh, hi, Leonard. Where have you been, Johnny? It's been years. Yeah, I know. Listen, can you give me a hand? Who got poison this time? Two of them. I hope it's poison. And that you can prove it for me. We'll try. What do I do? Meet me here at the home of Eric Turnbull in Stamford, Connecticut. Okay, but Johnny... Give you the address in a minute. But Johnny, what do you mean you hope somebody got poison? Because if they didn't, I'm going to go off my rocker. What? Because the only other possible cause of death could be a curse. The curse of Kamashek. Who? An Egyptian king who died a couple of dozen centuries ago. What? Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Inter-Allied Life Insurance Company, Crutchfield Square, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the curse of Kamashek matter. Expense account continued. I called Dr. Leonard St. Clair, an old school chum, because I knew him to be one of the foremost toxicologists in the country. And I was telling the truth. I hoped it could be shown that some kind of poison killed Donald Cronin and subsequently his uncle, Eric Turnbull. Both, apparently, had believed in the curse of the old Egyptian pharaoh. A curse that was to befall anyone who violated his ancient tomb on the banks of the Nile. Donald had done this in excavating the tomb. But his uncle here in Stamford had only touched the bones that Donald had airmailed to him. He was opening the package that Master Donald... God rest his soul. That Master Donald had sent him just before he died, there at the tomb in Egypt. I brought them in here to the library for him, sir. Go on, Haskins. Well, then you rang the doorbell. I, I left him with it, and uh, when you and I came in here... Yeah, dead. From the curse of Gamashek, Mr. Dollar... Oh, no, Haskins, I don't believe it. A friend of mine, Dr. St. Clair, will be here shortly, and he'll be but able to... But shouldn't we notify the police? No, sir? no, no, later. But, but leave my poor employee's body just lying there? For the time being, yes. Until Dr. St. Clair examines it. Eh? As you wish, sir. That's what I wish. Haskins. One person in this confusing mess I hadn't given a second thought to. As it turned out, there wasn't time, for Len St. Clair arrived a few minutes later in a car equipped like a miniature laboratory. No doubt as a result of the police work he was frequently called on to do. First, of course, in his capacity as an M.D., he made a thorough examination of Eric Turnbull's body for purposes of death certificate data. It's poison, all right, Johnny. I'm sure of it. At least as sure as I can be, short of making an autopsy. But... What kind of poison, Len? And how administered? Well, at the risk of making it sound like a dime novel, I'd say it was an extremely rare, uh, well... Well, what? Come on. Well, it's something I haven't heard of in years. Related to the old Indian arrow poison. It's very difficult to detect. Can you make sure? Yes, if you'll help me drag some of my equipment in from the car, including a cage of white mice. Wh what? Yeah, on which to experiment with samples of the stuff. Samples from those old bones out of the tomb? Mm, that's right. Now, from what you've told me, only two people have touched the bones since the minute they were discovered in the tomb. Three. A native carrier, Donald Cronin, and now the late Eric Turnbull. And they've all died. But, Johnny... Yeah? The poison I'm thinking of would hardly have been put on those bones in the time of the pharaohs. Oh, and by the way, I hope no one's touched them here. No, I've left them just as they are in that mailing wrapper. Good. Because it could be fatal. I'll carefully scrape them when we get the equipment in here. <laughs> We brought in what Len needed for his work, including the white mice. Then I closed him in the library and left him to his experiments. To a bit of research, too, for he'd brought in a couple of thick books on toxicology. As a matter of routine, I phoned the local coroner and then tried to reach Dorothy Harkness. Her number didn't answer. I was about to drive over to her little apartment when Len came out of the library. I was right, Johnny. Curaba arsenium. Is that the name of the stuff? Uh-huh. In its powder form, absorbed into the pores of the skin, it could be fatal almost immediately. And listen to me. Yeah? Somehow, between the time the bones of that old king were discovered and the time that Donald Cronin touched them, somebody put that poison on him. How? Without endangering himself. By keeping it in aqueous solution until the bones were sprayed with sprayed it. Sprayed with it? Wait a minute. Yeah? Sprayed with it, huh? A doctor. 
An Englishman who was on the expedition told me that the bones had been sprayed with some kind of preservative even before the native carrier touched them. You thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, right. Instead of preservative, it was the poison. Well, who sprayed them? I've got a wild idea, Len. But if it's right, it'll sew up this whole case. I wonder who that is. Well, while you're finding out, I'm going back and recheck these tests. But only as a matter of routine, because I'm sure I'm right. I beg your pardon, sir. Yeah, Haskins? Uh, Miss Dorothy Harkness is here, sir. Huh? And her young brother, Walter. Shall I ask them in, sir? By all yeah, means. It's a terrible thing that has happened. Is that really the way you feel about it, Dorothy? What? Yes, just what do you mean by that, Mr. Dollar? I'm Walter Harkness. Well, come right in, Walter. Because I have a sneaking suspicion you're the boy I've been looking for. What? Your conscience finally begin to hurt you? Would you like to sit down and write your confession now? What are you talking about? Or did you and Dorothy just come here to put on a front? You know, as a cover-up? I don't know what you're talking about. Johnny, what are you saying? Sit down, both of you, because I'm going to be saying plenty. But look here, Mr. Dollar. Sit down, Dollar. I said. Now sit down. All right, Dorothy, we'll begin with you. Johnny, I don't understand. Now listen to me. Can... From what you told me, and I've no other reason for believing it except that you told me, Donald Cronin was in love with you. It was true. And I At any rate, I... he made you part beneficiary of his $100,000 life insurance policy. Half of it, I believe. A cool $50,000. Johnny, how can you say you're oh, even Oh, be think... quiet. Mr. Dollar... I'm coming I... to you right now, Walter. You're working for the museum where your father is curator of archaeology. The museum that has depended quite a lot not only on Donald Cronin's scientific contributions, but his monetary help as well. well that may be true, but now look the here. The museum... You... The other beneficiary of Donald's insurance, also $50,000. Mr. Dollar, if you're implying that I had anything to do with Donald's death... You in can order shut to gain... up, too, and let me talk. This is the first chance I've had to begin to tie this case up. The first time any of the crazy elements in it made sense. No, wait, tell me this. Eric Turnbull was opposed to Donald's interest in the museum, wasn't he? Well, yes, Sure. But then... And I'll bet my bottom dollar that if something happened to both Donald and his uncle, the estate worth nearly a million was willed by Donald to the museum. That's true, Johnny, but there's no... No wonder Eric Turnbull was afraid for Donald's life. Because he knew who would ultimately benefit most by his death. No wonder he hated you, Dorothy. Johnny! Oh, Johnny, you can't mean you think that I would... No, that I... no, no, no. I think you were only being used as a tool, Dorothy. You told me yourself how your father opposed your marrying him. How his only interest was in getting money for the museum. Is that true, Walter? Yes, Mr. Dollar, that is true. But if you mean to imply that I or any of us was involved in Donald's Walter, death... Walter, the more I think about it, the more I'm sure you are directly involved. Uh, now, sit down. It's a lie. I swear to it, Mr. Dollar. You're wrong. It's a lie. We'll see about that. Because there's one thing you may have overlooked. I know what killed Donald Crump. You do? Oh, yes, Walter. Just as well as you do. But I don't. I... I haven't the least... The, the curse of Kamashek? The curse Johnny? of Kamashek. Not by a long shot. Was it, Walter? I told you, I haven't the slightest... All right, then I... tell me this. Immediately the pile of bones was found in Kamashek's tomb before anyone touched them. I refused to touch them be Will you listen to me? Before anybody touched them, somebody sprayed those bones with a so-called preservative. And I mean so-called. Well, I don't know why you should. Oh? Well, that's common practice these days, in case you don't know it. But I fail to see what... What was supposed to be a preservative was in reality a deadly poison. What? Oh, come on now, Walter. But you're wrong. You must be wrong. It's impossible. You know, you're very convincing, I must admit. Well, it's true. I applied that preservative, Mr. Dollar. Oh, you did? Yes. Aqueous solution, wasn't it? Of course. And I'll bet you washed your hands very carefully immediately afterward, didn't you? Yes, of course I did, because I was told to. By whom? By... Oh, no. No. Walter? What is it? Holy... Tell me, Walter. Walter! Yes? Do you know anything about a man who tried to intercept me on my way to Egypt? To make sure I didn't get there until the bones of the pharaoh were sent to Eric Turnbull and that Donald Cronin died? No. No, I don't, believe me. Then answer me this one. Did you make up the, we'll call it, preservative that you used over there? No. Then who did? And who told you to be sure to wash your hands immediately after using it? Well? Walter! Oh, no! I, I'm afraid so, Dorothy. Oh, no! 
Better tell me, Walter. I beg your pardon, Mr. Dollar, but Mr. Harkness Sr. is here, too. Mr. Dollar, I'm Adam Harkness, curator of archaeology at the museum. Well, well, Mr. Harkness, I'm really glad to see you. Dorothy, Walter, Mr. Dollar, I've come to pick up the bones from the grave of Kamashek that I understand Donald Cronin sent to his uncle instead of to me through some misunderstanding. Oh, yeah, sure. I had a notion you'd want to pick up those bones, Dr. Harkness. And I'll give them to you on one condition. Oh? What is that? That you take them out of the package in which they arrived here with your bare hands. That you carry them out of this house also in your bare hands. Why, that's a strange... Will you? Of course not. Why? Why, because such priceless relics are too fragile, too... Too full of a deadly poison that you had them sprayed with? Kuraba arsenium, I believe it's called. I don't know what you're... Walter, what have you been telling us? It's true, isn't it, Father? Well, Dr. Harkness... Daddy! I don't know how you found out, Della, but I'll tell you this. You won't ever live Wait a minute, put that thing down. Father! Wait a minute! Daddy! (laughs) Johnny? (sighs) You stopped him all right, Len. But I think he'll live. Good. I knew all the police work I've been doing would come in handy sometime. Thanks for barging in at the psychological moment. Well, I was only coming in to confirm the results of my tests. But I guess Dr. Harkness had already done it. Yeah. So, I guess the museum will profit mightily from half the insurance and all of the estate of Donald Cronin. The museum, that is, without Dr. Adam Harkness. Expense account total, including transportation back to Hartford, $985. Remarks? Well, doesn't mean a thing, I know, but uh, I kind of wonder what I might have found if I'd been assigned to investigate the deaths of the people who excavated some of those other old Egyptian tombs. Tombs that had a curse on them. (laughs) Interesting thought, isn't it? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a search for $80,000 that was never there. And a body that was never there. Yet both of them had to be found. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Heard in this week's cast were Paul Dubow, Alan Reed Sr., Dick Crenna, Virginia Gregg, Ben Wright, Forrest Lewis, Eric Snowden, Barney Phillips, James McCallion, and Les Tremaine. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.